Uh, I had a couple. Uh, I was reading this morning. I hadn't read much as far as what's on my mind this week. I did have, uh, like I say, a few thoughts, but uh, I want to read the uh, book of Romans. Uh, book of Romans, chapter 4, if you'll turn to it. Uh, I ain't really, I promise you, I ain't really studied nothing out, but they, this is good reading right here. It's good to. Romans chapter 4, and that may be the only place I read. I don't know. I might have another place or two. We'll have some more. Romans chapter 4. And I might turn to the book of Hebrews. I don't know. You might just find that just in case. Uh, there's, a, there's a verse over here that you don't have to flip to it. I ain't much on just one verse. But uh, the, the book of Ephesians, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And I thought about that verse of Scripture this week and how it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And I, I've read this verse, I've got it highlighted in my Bible, and I've thought about it as far as salvation being a gift. And uh, I think grace, salvation, and faith is a gift. I believe this verse says, For by grace are you saved through faith. That's three things all in one sentence. That all works together is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. I, I, I believe grace, salvation, and faith is a gift from God, and I, it's a big deal. And I, I'm going to read this in Romans chapter 4, and I'll, I'll read quite a bit of this. And I was reading it sitting over there, thinking I might have to get up here when I didn't see Kenny wasn't here. But in Romans chapter 4, it's a familiar scripture, and it says, uh, Romans 4 and 1 says, What then? What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth, the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Say, say, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness how then how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or or in uncircumcision not in circumcision but in uncircumcision for he received the sign of circumcision a seal of righteousness of faith which he had yet being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe Though they be not circumcised, that the righteousness might be imputed unto them also. For the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith that our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made and the promise made of none effect, but the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise, might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy, and so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his 
his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness not now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Yeah. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice yeah. in hope of the glory of God. And I'll stop there. I opened up for Mitchell Wednesday night and read about... Paul's thorn in the flesh, and uh, I thought about that a bunch more this week. And I, I told him as I opened up Wednesday night that grace is not weak. Grace, uh, you go on over and read about Paul and the thorn in the flesh, and it, it says that my, my my strength is made perfect in weakness, and uh, it's because of grace. That grace comes in and makes you stronger. And here it is talking about uh, righteousness. Abraham's righteousness is what uh, Abraham's faith is what. Uh, made him righteous. And it, this was Abraham. This is a way back. And I'm not going to get into all this necessarily about the circumcision and all that. It, it's not that it don't matter, but I didn't read and study enough on it to, to really help any of us this morning. But I, I wanted to get down and, and, and in verse 19 and on. In 20, it says, He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And, I thought about the promises of God and I was really reading on that and led me over here to this and I got to thinking about <clears throat> these verses that talking about grace and talking about faith and all these different things and I, I seen this saying on the, on the internet and I, I'm, not, I'm not going to try to teach from the internet and I ain't going to tell you it's right. I just seen it and liked it. And it said that a, a believer will never become an unbeliever because faith is a gift from God. Amen. And I liked that. And I got to thinking about it before I really started. You know, I just thought about it. And I thought, well, that's that's pretty good because uh, I just read it in Ephesians that that that, that grace and uh, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So yes, truly, faith is a gift from God. And it says, I like the way it said that the believer would not become an unbeliever. Because of faith is a gift from God. And I thought about it as I was reading all these scriptures and things, especially this morning early. And I, I thought, well, that's pretty true. And it goes right back to not to believing in false of grace or eternal security. Uh, you, you can't, I, I, I can't lose what I got because what, got, what I've got is a gift from God. And, and uh, not only is it a gift from God, it's a promise from God. Amen. And I thought about it, and David mentioned a while back, and I jotted it down about the promises of God. And I got to reading, and I was studying, maybe in last week or this week, and looking up and reading, and I thought, well, I'll make me a list of the promises of God. Uh, one of these days I'll study it out real good and, and if I ever get to teach again or whatever happens I'll, I'll have something that'll be good for me and I'll read and study on it. I, I got you a list right here the promises of God right here. Amen. Amen. You can't go through this book and jot down all the promises that God promised what He'd do for us. You, you can't do it. You just need to get in this book and, 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 and read it and, and take it for what it says and know that God, God give us this book. God uh, I, I can tell you some off the top of my head. He promised He'd never leave me nor forsake me. Right. He promised me if I'd endure to the end that I'd be saved. Yeah, he right. promised me that, that if I'd live my life according to this book, that He would bless me, not just with physical blessings, but with uh, spiritual blessings. Uh, he promised me that, uh, that uh, all these things, there's too many to count. And, and I, uh, What He promised Abraham was, was the promised land. He promised Abraham He'd be the father of many nations. Sure. And I like what it says there. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Amen. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Sure. You will not believe if 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 if, if you're sitting around and, and me are telling you the one of the promises of God was he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us and 
You're not living where you need to be, or your faith ain't uh, your faith ain't as strong as you know it should be, or could be, or would be. And you're just hoping that you'll make it through this world. You're in a miserable state this morning. I, you, you've got to. You see this? We throw faith around, and we throw grace around like it's just uh, like it's just them just church words. Yeah. You okay. say that? That's words you use at church. Faith and grace. Come on. What there ought to be is words that you live your life by. Yeah. I, 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 I like to read that. I, I, I wish somebody would have been here with you tonight. Grace is not weak. Amen. At all, grace is grace is grace is a strong is a strengthening foundation of my salvation. Grace is what teaches me to. to grace is not my excuse to go out here and cuss and lie and sin and drink. Grace is what keeps me from doing that. My, 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 but now my faith, uh, because faith is also a gift from God, just the same as grace was. They give me my salvation. My faith is what keeps me holding my head up and knowing everything's going to be all right because God's in control. I have faith in that. Amen. I have faith because I'm saved. I'm saved because I have faith. I'm saved by grace because that's the way God set this up. He knew I'd need grace to be strong and, and uh, not to fall after junk and not to do these other things. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Amen. <coughs> but we're strong in faith, giving glory to God. I, 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 you see it all the time. I, mean, all, I, I know a lot of people's mentioned co-workers and praying for things on the job and stuff. You don't really have to work with certain people. You can be out and about and see people that you know that go to church, people that you that you think's where they need to be, are staggering at the promises of God through unbelief, staggering at their faith, staggering at... You start using grace as a crutch and you're staggering at the things God told you. If you start, if you start uh, wavering on your faith and think, well, maybe God won't do this. Or, I don't know. I've been praying for a year every day and God ain't done this yet, so I, my, I, I just don't know. I, I don't think my faith... My faith ain't what it used to be because God ain't answered this prayer yet. You were staggering because of unbelief. Right. Uh, I, I, I'll just tell you, and it's been hinted around a whole lot, and I, ain't, I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, I, but I believe this book, and I, 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 I know I'm saved. I told a boy here a while back, I, I, I know Christ died for me because I'm saved. I don't know if He died for you. You say, well, that's a pretty mean thing to say. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you're saved or not. I know I am. So I know Christ died for me. I, I've met Him. And I've talked to Him. That's how personal it is to me. But I, I, I know what He's got for me and I know what He does for me. I, I know that because I have faith in what I believe. Amen. But if, if, if you're at a place in... If you're at a place where you think you've got to call on God 24-7... Uh, hoping that He's going to do something for you. You're staggering at, at your faith and you're staggering at the promises of God. You say, well, I asked God for this because uh, uh, I, I really want it or I really need it. But I, I'm just uh, hoping He'll really come through and do this for me. You, you, might, you, you shouldn't have opened your mouth. That's right. You, you ought to be in a place, especially in this church, the way Dave preaches uh, uh, about faith and how... Uh, 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 not nothing to do with Dave. If you are a Christian and you're saved and you know the what I just said a minute ago, if you know Christ died for you, you are to you are to bow humbly before an Almighty God, Amen. knowing without a doubt that He's going to do exactly what you ask Him, Amen. and ask Him one time, and go on. Thank Him and go on. Right here it says, "Give Him glory to God." And go on and just sit patiently awaiting on God to fulfill His promise to you. Amen. Amen. He said He'd give us the sincere desires of our heart. He said He'd know what we have need of before we ask. <coughs> I, 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 I don't beg and plead. I used to beg and plead with God. I used to pray all the time the same things over and over again. God, I need this. God, this over and over. And I used to think that's the way it worked, Rick. I used to think, well, if I ask Him enough, He'll really think I'm serious and then He'll answer you. When I got my life where it was supposed to be in line with this book and the doing what I know to do, I could ask God for something just so I can. And I didn't say that it happened the next day. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. But I didn't ask it one time. You know why? 
Because I'm like Dave said in Wednesday night, if, was a, if he told you to run towards that wall, he believed there'd be a hole there. That's the kind of belief you got it. That's the kind of belief Abraham had. That's the kind of belief Abraham had. It, without wavering, he staggered not at the promises of God. Come on. Did he just hope and pray and you think, well, maybe one of these days, David talks about his faith, maybe one of these days I'll get to, to that level of faith. No, you need to be not, I like, I, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I, I like it when people call me and want me to pray, I do. It makes me feel good, it, it helps, it gives me a, another opportunity to pray, it's good for me, it's good for them, but I also like it when I don't have to call nobody. Basically, you say, well, that's, that's sort of weird. I like it when I can just get down the business of God, right. Jeff, and I can call on him. Yeah. And I don't need nobody. I ain't saying you ought to be like that all the time, but there ought to be times where you've got enough, do you not have enough faith where you, if you don't have, I'll tell you this right now, there's a need, everybody in here's got a need this morning. You can't go through this life, you can't get up just because it's Sunday and not have a need, and it, Everybody has needs. There's always something, something you ought to be. You ought to be something you always at a need and a reliant on God for. If you can't do that this morning without help and knowing God will eventually give you that or answer that prayer, you're staggered at the promises of God and the staggering at the faith you have in God this morning. And I can tell you that because I've done that. There's been times where... I've needed to pray for something. There's been times people's messaged me or want me to pray. And I couldn't. You talk about a sad shape to be in when somebody calls you or messages you and says, hey, pray for this. I need you to really pray. And I mean, it breaks my heart because I'm in a place where I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. That, that hurts. That, that scares me to death. One of these days, it may be my wife or youngin'. That, that, that's scary to me. That's why it's better to be just like Abraham and have this, have this faith. You see, all, and, and, and I'm not going to get into the law and all that, but Abraham was for sure under the law. Uh, back, what is it talking about here? And it's not that they didn't need the law. It's just telling you how much, how, how big a deal faith was even then. They had the law was their guidelines to live by, but even then... Abraham's had so much faith right here in all these things that it was such a big deal that, that his faith was imputed unto him for righteousness. And it continues even today. That, that, that's what he's just saying there. But, uh, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. Uh, for if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I was talking to uh, Brother Shane Gold. I meant to mention him during the uh, prayer request. Got a, he's having some heart problems. He's got to go for a heart catheterization Tuesday. And I was talking to him yesterday. He's talking about it and being scared. And I said, well, I'll be scared to death. He said, you know, I've been a pray. He said, you pray and I'll pray. And I said, well, we wouldn't need that. And he said, but I, I, he said, I, I feel good about it. I've got peace. And I told him, I said, that peace means a whole lot. I have learned here in the last few months, peace with God means a whole, whole lot to me. You, I didn't say it never did before, but now I, 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 I've got to where I trust the peace of God more than I used to. I've got to where I look for the peace of God on situations more than I used to. It's a big deal. When all this works together, all this is just a, just a big, uh, it's just a big wheel in a way that your grace and your faith and your salvation and your peace with God needs to be working together all the time. Right. Uh, but I, I, I honestly have to believe a lot of it's in your faith. Because uh, if, if if I didn't have faith in the promises of God. I, it'd be bad. If I didn't have faith in knowing I was saved, it'd be bad. If I didn't have faith in, uh, in all these other, in knowing that Christ was raised again, I, it'd be bad. You, I believe it, you see. Your faith is a big deal. It's the a, it's a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Amen. If Dave takes off running through that, to that wall because God told him to, that's substance. That's, that's something you can get a hold of. Yeah. I've got a lot of substance and a lot of evidence in my life. Uh, don't, don't be a staggering. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Unbelief is not having faith. 
Um, and it, it, if, if, if you're really a believer and really got faith, you're, you, you, you're steadfast. You know, brother, a lot of people don't understand. <clears throat> the Bible said that God give every man a measure of faith. Amen. Amen. Every one of them. When you got Amen. saved, God gave you a measure of faith. <clears throat> and according to the Word of God, it was explained as the smallest seed of the garden, as a mustard seed. Yeah. But He said when a man plants it in his garden and he covers <clears throat> it and tills it, and he works it. It grows into the greatest tree of the Amen. garden that the fowls of the earth could even line <clears throat> into it. The Bible said to try him and prove him and see if he won't open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there's not even room to receive. What people don't understand, they don't know if they can trust God or not. These people sitting right in this church this morning, you don't even know if you can trust God or not. <clears throat> you know why? Because you don't fellowship with God every day. Come on, I'm, I'm just going to... Trust is earned. Come on. And if you can't trust the God that you serve, you don't know Him very well. Come on. You don't know Him very well. Trust is earned. If I trust Mitchell, it ain't just... Hey man, something that I get to, and I see Mitchell's face and he looks like a face that I can trust. I trust Mitchell because I've tried Mitchell. <clears throat> I've called on Mitchell. And there's people in this church that I've called on and every time I've ever needed them, they've been there. I trust them. And there's a few that I've called on and told me they'd be there and lied like a dog. Hey man, come on. Never showed up, never had any remorse about it. Bless Come on. You. That's the people I don't trust. Amen. If you can't depend on them, you can't trust them. Can I get an amen? amen? Anybody that would lie to you, amen, you cannot trust amen. that person in any situation. Amen. Can I, anybody know what I'm talking amen. about? Amen. But the Bible said, let God be truth and every man a lie. Amen. That's what the Word of God yeah. said. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, everything I've ever asked God for, everything I've ever called on His name for, God's all always been amen. there. Amen. amen. I can trust God. Amen. I've tried Him. I've proved Him. And I know He's there. Amen. And I know when I pray. The Bible said Elisha was a man with like passion such as we are. But he prayed for it to rain not. And it rained not a space of three years amen. and six months. Can I get an amen? You begin to teach about Abraham. Abraham, amen. And the faith of Abraham. The Bible said it's impossible to please God without faith. And faith without works is dead. Can I get an amen? Come on, praise God. There'll be evidence in your life if you believe God. If God tells you to climb out on a limb, you know what you'll do? You'll climb out on a limb because you know there's a blessing awaiting on you. Can I get an amen? Abraham, the Bible said God spoke to Abraham. Now you listen. I've had things I'll preach after a while. But amen, I want to share something with you. You're just talking about amen when I first got saved. You know what men do? Men causes doubt, amen. When I first got saved, God could have told me to run through the building. I'd have made a hole or God would one. But He would have put me to the outside. Can I get an amen? I, and after I grew, did you know it took me a long time to know that there's probably 70 kinds of Baptist. I, hey man, I didn't know there was any Methodist. I, I didn't know nothing about a Presbyterian. I, I didn't know there's anything such as a Catholic. I, can I get an amen? I, and every denomination I, has got something wrong about it. I, can I get anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I'm saved by grace through faith. I, I'm a child of God. I, I belong to the church. I, the church of believers. I, can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Amen. 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 The Bible said now, Abram had a son, Isaac, and Isaac. He loved him. Abraham loved his son. God spoke to him and told him to take him up on the mountain and sacrifice his son. Amen. 
And the Bible said to Abraham, Amen. He didn't stagger the promises of God. He had tried God. You know what he knew? He knew without a shadow of a doubt, Amen. Yeah, that Lord. God would meet him on the mountain. Yeah. I believe that in all my heart. Amen. I believe God's faithful to his promises. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that God's not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Can I get anybody know what I'm preaching? Oh, Abraham. He got the wood. Amen. He took Isaac and he got all the stuff for the sacrifice. And he started up the mountain. Amen. His son had asked him, said, Father, Amen, said, Where's the man the sacrifice? The animal for the sacrifice. And every time he asked, he said, God will provide himself one. Can I get an amen? Praise be unto God. He got on top of the mountain. He laid his boy up on the altar. Put the wood in place. Got everything the way God said. Drawn out his knife. And I believe he would have slew Isaac. Just as short as I'm standing here. And you know why? I believe the man of God knew. That if he took his life, God would give him another. Can I get an amen? Amen. Woo! Amen. Let's see more. The problem with people, they treat God like He's a people. God's a supreme being. God's almighty. Amen. And the Bible said as He drew His knife back to slay the boy, Amen. He said there was a ram caught in a thicket. Amen. This day and time we live, people, it's the theologians and everybody else that say it's a coincidence. That ram, was, I'm going to have you to know, praise God, God had that old ram. Amen. A grazing up the mountain on the yeah, backside. Amen. Can I get a name? The Bible don't say this, but I'm looking through the eye of faith. I believe God had that old ram's mind heading toward the top of the mountain. Amen. A grazing along. You know what he's doing, Keith? He's getting ready. They got planted a bush there. Amen. You know what he was sending up the other side? A child of the king. Amen. A trust. In God and approving his faith to an Almighty God. And brother, amen, I'm here to tell you, amen, that old boy coming up the other side with his son to sacrifice him. God had his sacrifice to climb to the other side. And they met on top. God don't do things in coincidence. Amen. 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 God can control the animals. He's in control of everything. Right. Well, Tommy, pretty everybody's scared of the storm. God will have His way in the storm now. Amen. I, uh, Amen. Do you know people can't see this? That's right. People can't see it. They don't want to see it. <laughs> Abraham believed God. And the Bible said over in Hebrews 11, the Bible said... Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And by it, the elders obtain a good report. Amen. They believe God when God spoke to them. Most of us ain't even close enough to even hear God's voice. Do you ever hear God's voice? Most people don't. Most people have sat in the house of God for 50 years and have never heard God speak. You're serving a dead God. Bless him, Lord. Huh? You staggered at the promises of God. Let me tell you something, praise God. When you believe God, you believe God can speak. My God can talk. Can I get an amen? My God can walk. My God can heal. My God can save. My God can do anything. The Bible said, is anything too hard for the Lord? I don't know what kind of God you serve, but my God is the Almighty God. And besides Him, there is no other God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. God asks you to do something, you don't even do it. God puts something on your heart, you don't even care enough about God to even try. Bless Him, Lord. 
The Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. 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 I believe when we're obedient to God's word and that peace, I pray about that peace all the time. And if I don't get peace, I don't do it. Amen. Huh? Come on. I, I just don't do it. I, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna do it without the peace of God in it. I don't want it. Because it ain't no good to bring trouble and turmoil in your life. Amen. But do you believe God? Do you believe God to the place that you'd take your son and put him on an altar and start to slay him? Would you? Would you believe God to the place? Amen. That praise God. Amen. If God, I, I just don't understand. People think I'm some kind of fruit loop. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, praise God. I didn't believe God. I was the person that made fun of the people that went to church. Listen. I thought their God, amen, was make-believe. Come on! Yeah. I thought it was make-believe. I never knew about a Jesus. I didn't know about a God. I'd heard people in the community talk about it. I knew my grandma prayed to Him, Listen. but I didn't know Him. Amen! And I didn't live my life like I knowed Him. Can I get an amen? But one Friday night, I met my best friend at an old fashioned altar. Hey, can I get an amen? He's never been nothing but good to me. Can I get an amen? He's my best friend. I know him personally. He went home with me. He stays with me. He abides with me. Amen. It ain't a weekly thing, one day a week. That's right. Amen. He's still my God this morning. Two o'clock in the morning, Amen. Jenny. Amen. 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 He's still my God. Amen. Things happen for a purpose. It ain't all bad. The Bible said all Amen. things work together for the good. Yeah. of them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. I don't care what it is that happens. It's for your good. Amen. Come on. Anybody know what I'm preaching? Amen. Lord have mercy. Praise God. Somebody ought to know something. Amen. I remember a time in my life. Can I tell this? Amen. I'd like to tell something. Now this old boy sitting right here. I used, I'm going to be honest with you. Used to, I didn't like him at all. When he first started coming to my house, I grew a hatred inside of me that, amen, I didn't, I despised to see it face, amen. But, amen, I, I thought I'd be mean to him and run him off. I would know better than that, praise God. He ain't got enough sense to know you're being mean to him. And I'm talking about B.J. Phipps who's sitting right here in the house of God. Now listen to me. But, amen, God began to melt my heart. Say, preacher, you ought to say stuff like that. He'll tell Myself. I ain't always been a preacher. I ain't always been a saved, and I ain't always been on the right side of the law. We was going up the mountain three of us, and I was breaking the young horse, and we was going along, and all was a, a sheriff's car come down, and he just slowed down. He's a staring at us. He got an eyeball on Big J. Hey, man, you remember that day? I'm, I'm going to preach this, man. I'm talking about faith. He's seen faith. He seen him work, boy. And you see, those that don't know the whole story, you don't know what I'm talking about, so don't hate me for saying what I said, okay? I'll get to the good part. I'm going to skip the bad part and get to the good part, okay? And that patrol, that, that man, he, he started slinging rocks backwards. BJ took off on his horse wide open and he ran as fast as he could run, running from the law. I've been there. I've run from them a time or two. So I just kept riding along the road. I wasn't guilty, sister. I had nothing to hide. 
And I was riding along on my little Marno patrolman. He would just spin rocks right up against my old horse. And she just walked right along. Never got a bit excited. I just held her right in the middle of the road. I thought, praise God, I ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. Hey, man, come on. You said you helped. I rode her in the road. Hey, man. And Jeff, all at once, that feller, he took off down the road. He threw rocks all over me, all over my horse. Out of sight he went. We rode all the way around the mountain and we began to talk about, amen, a few minutes, BJ come out of the woods and we rode on around the mountain, amen, and amen, we was talking about, I was telling him about my God. Amen. The God that loves me, amen. Yeah. The God that delivers me. Amen. And at that time in life, he was fixing to face some time. Amen. And praise God, he had to go to court. And he felt like he had nobody on his side, Jeff. I know I've been there. And I began to tell him, Crystal, about a God. Amen. God instilled in me. He said, You tell him, I'm going to meet him in the courtroom. <laughs> That's where we all met Jesus. When we were found guilty in the courtroom of life. And the Lord. And he pleaded our case, and we got free. Amen. I told him, I said, God just spoke to my heart. I said, God said to you, when you go into the courtroom, for you to look around in that courtroom, God will meet you there. And you know what he said to me? He said, I don't trust anybody. And I don't. He said, I don't know if I could trust God or not. I said, you can't miss God. <laughs> Scared to death, wasn't you? As an old preacher, amen, began to pray. And I, I prayed hard. And that morning, me and little old Mark Hodgson, we were working together up on the scaffold. And we got to crying. And heaven began to move. I said, Mark, you got to help me. I got a young man over yonder. That's going to face some time this morning if God don't intervene and set him free. And I said, we got down on the ground and we began to pray. And Mary, I'm telling you, heaven fell on that place. And I couldn't wait for the phone to ring. Amen. And I thought, praise God, he ain't going to call me. I don't know what my God done. He ain't going to call me. I knew God was going to do something wrong. Amen. I ain't, hey, listen, I didn't say maybe God had moved. Maybe God had worked. What did I tell you? I said, God's going to meet you yeah. in the courtroom of that place. You know what they done? God's mercy. They called his name, put his case out, sent him home. Like scared him to death. He thought they'd made a mistake. But I'm here to tell you, my God don't make mistakes. Amen. Amen. Circumstances in life kept leading him back to my house. He saw God move. He even got to where he wouldn't get on a horse without praying first. Amen. And <laughs> Lord have mercy. I saw God intervene in his life. I saw him bow down. Yeah. And the faith that God gave me, he gave it to him. Amen. And he became born again. Yeah. Amen. Regenerated and made alive. Call our youth for a while. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Sitting in the house of God this morning. Yeah. Uh, knowing what God can do. Uh, that boy jumped up out yonder. Amen. And fall around the church with the tank of mine. And just because of the words he spoke. And the young man come out of the back of the church. God saved. And when he got up, you know what he said? I used to do drugs with that boy. And if God can save him, he can do it for me. He said, I know. Woo! You talk about faith. Just how real is your God this morning? Randy, where would you be without faith and grace? I love you more than anything in this life. I'm going to tell you right now, folks. As things in life goes in strange manners, and praise God, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. 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 I'll preach here after a while. 
Bless him, Lord. me up, bro. I love you. <laughs> but hey, man, praise God. You can talk about faith all you want to. If you've got faith, have you quit cussing? Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Amen. Lord. Amen. Yeah. So now, preacher, I, I mash my finger every once in a while. I, I let out a cuss word. Why? Help him, Lord. Exactly. Bless him, Lord. Why do you have to cuss? Yeah. Bless him, Lord. Why do you have to cuss? You ought to praise God. He didn't match it all. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Even when we're in pain, we ought to praise God. Come on. Amen. We ought to praise Him. And, and man, Lord, have mercy. The Bible said He inhabits our praise. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Faith without works is dead. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. Now I'm going to get right down to where it's at, okay? The Bible said faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. You want to know why it's so important that praise God when you come to the house of God, you want to pay attention? Because God's increasing your faith. Every Sunday, every Wednesday. And if you miss what the preacher says, your faith is not being increased. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Say, I don't like that preacher. I don't really care what you like. I'm going to yeah. preach you the book. Amen. I'm Amen. telling you the truth. Do you want to be a strong Christian? Amen. Amen. Do you want to be a strong... Do you want to be somebody that can pray heaven down? Elisha was. Amen. He never staggered. Lord. And it didn't take, praise God, a tornado to get him convinced God is a movie. Amen. Read it. The Bible said, amen, it hadn't rained three years and six months and Elijah went up on the mountain to pray. And you know what he went up on the mountain to pray for? Rain. Amen. And he had a servant with him and I believe that servant needed to see the power of God. Amen. amen. I believe he needed to see it. For Elijah told him, said, you go out over the sea and you look and see if there's any evidence. I'll stay here and pray. Amen. That's the reason I tell people all the time when they call me to pray, you know what I tell them? I'm a praying you trust. Can I get an amen? It don't do me no good to pray for you if you don't trust God. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? But all Elijah told him, said to her, my God, look how I'm about to fly. Told him, said, you go out there, look, and I'll pray. And he come back, he said, you see anything? He said, no. Lord, and I'll not say, he said, go back again. Just go on back out there again. And I'm going to stay right here and pray. Hey, man, he sent him out there about three times, I believe the Bible said. And the third time the Bible said when he come back, he said, did you see anything? And, yeah, I see a cloud. A rising up. And it was locking into a man's hand. I don't believe it was no bigger than that. But all I just saw the mighty works of God. The Bible said, woo! Little as much when God's in it. Amen. Amen. You know what Elijah done? He got up and he girded his loins and he started running. He said, get down off this mountain. I hear an abundance of rain. Yeah, amen. The Bible said he outrun the chariots. Yeah, now, that old man of God was high stepping. Everybody talks about a running spell. Elijah had a running spell that day. Amen. 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 Praise God, it rained. <clears throat> Can we believe God for the place that amen if we'd ask God for it to hold back and he'd hold the rain back? Do we carry our umbrella with us? Bless him, Lord. Bless him, you staggered. Amen. Amen. If you ask God for sunshine, do you carry your umbrella? Bless him, Lord. That ain't faith. Amen. Amen. That ain't faith, Rob. Amen. Rob asked me the other day, I had my sunglasses on. And pretty cloudy we went wrong. I have my sunglasses on out there at Bear Creek, and there's a fellow come by and he said, What in the world are you wearing sunglasses for? He said, It's 60% chance of storms today. Hit it all cloudy. I said, Yeah, but with God, there's 40% of sunshine, and I'm getting ready for it. Can I get an amen? You know, it never rained a drop. Sun come out, it's so pretty. Not because of me. Bless him, Lord. My dad is on the roof. Mitchell, I used to do a little roofing and I can't do it anymore. I can't carry the shingles. My knees won't hold up on the roof. I, I'm just, I thank God I won't get a new body one of these days. But I was on, let me tell you what God done for me. I was up on top of a roof one day, me and my dad and some more were working and 
used to work with my dad, and I miss that more than anything. Me and him couldn't get along at all. We just, we took my, I mean, I were just like, okay? He'll tell you, he just liked me. I just liked him. And we got a certain way of doing things, and, and Rob will tell you, God will tell you, I've got a certain way of doing things, and that's the way it's going to be done. It don't make no difference. Hey, man, if you've got some way of doing it and it ends up the same way, you're still going to do it my way. That's just the way I was raised. Amen. But that day we was on this roof and it was so hot. Jerry, and I'm going to hush. You go on to get ready to teach. It was so hot that whenever you put your knees down, the tar would melt through your britches leg and burn your knee. Amen. It was so hot. And we just liked just a few runs of shingles in the ridge cab. And Dad was wanting to get down off the roof. He said, Son, we're running this roof. We've got to get down. I said, Dad, we don't like it just a little bit. He said, We ain't going to be able to stand it. I said, Dad, if only the God I serve would send us a cold breeze up his valley, I said, We can finish that thing. And all at once, sister, you know what come up that valley? There's a cold breeze began to blow and the wind began to move and the trees are stirring. My dad looked at me and the tears welled up in his eyes. I just said, thank you, Lord. And went back to the other shingles. Can I get an amen? Do you believe God to the place? Amen that God will deliver you. You know what man's taught us? It might happen. You know what he's told us? You pray about what you want to. God ain't going to do nothing until it's his time. Amen? That's what he tells us. That's what man tells us. Man sowed so much doubt in the world that our people can't even believe. Amen. They can't believe it. Our children can't believe it. in the divine healing of God. It's because, praise God, the parents and the elders of the church, amen, don't even believe in the normal law anymore. Amen. Can I get an amen? Come on. Amen. Now listen to me. I'm going to preach this a minute and I'm going to hush. You talk about faith. Do we, do we believe God? Amen. amen. Where's the help of our church one night? <laughs> God told me to stop down, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, I very much believe in anointing with oil. I believe in the healing of God, the power of God. I believe in every gift of God. I believe in it all. Amen. I believe in some of it, some of the things I don't understand in the Word of God, but I still believe it's the Word of God. Amen. And I'll take it for what God said. But that evening, God told me to stop and get me some anointing oil. He'd been dealing with me about anointing with oil for a long time. And people talked about me. I've been called Greasy Palm Baptist. I've been called a little bit of everything. I've been run off for anointing with oil. I've been doing everything. But I'm telling you right now, the God I serve is still real and he's still saved and he still heals. Amen. The first time God ever showed me about healing, amen, and, 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 and this is sad. This is the way I looked at it. I was a young preacher, Jeff. My oldest daughter, her youngest daughter, Kayla, or Kelsey's here this morning. Had an earache. She had it all day, y'all. All day long. <coughs> we was coming home from mom's, and my girls has always been a daddy's girl. She's in the back seat. I was riding in the back with her, holding her on my lap, and her screaming with an earache. I'll never forget it. We pulled up to the red light in Lansing. I know it's a stop sign now, but it used to be a red light there. And my wife stopped. And you know what God spoke to my heart? You say, God talks to you, oh Lord, yeah. Amen. You ought to hear what He says to me sometimes. And amen, Jeff, God told me, He said, Son, I've already told you in my Word, you lay your hands on that baby's ear and you ask me. He said, I can't fix it if you don't ask me. But He said, if you'll ask me, He said, I'll stop that ear. Can I get a name? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what I've done? I looked around Thomas and I looked to see if there's anybody standing by the car to see if he's going to see me do it. Amen. And God said, just go ahead, child. And I laid my hands on her ear, Kelly. And praise God, you know what she done? She just went off to sleep. The pain left and she just went off to sleep. Amen. From then on, God began to deal with me about a lot of things. One evening, God called me. I said, revival it. Amen. Over at Helm Valley, and God told me, said, you stop and get you a bottle of nothing oil. And I thought, God, I know people don't believe this stuff. 
punch him all the way. <coughs> well, God said you get your bottle and I went right on home that bottle no wall, then you'll buy get nothing. Can I tell you how God works? You see, God knows what's fixing to happen in this church this morning before you ever got up. Did Amen. you know that? Amen. There's something big coming this morning. You better get ready. Amen. And that evening, I started that mile of that church, and there's a little dear sister, Sister Frances, was sitting on this side of the church. And I'll never forget when I walked by, she grabbed me with a breeches leg, pulled me over to her. She said, Preacher, I was praying today. <laughs> You want to see some faith? I'll show you some faith. Paul said, you show me your faith without your works and I'll show you mine by my works. This sister had faith, brother. She got me by the bridge's leg and she said, I was praying today. And God said for me to go in my cabinet and get this and bring it to you. He said to give it to you. She handed me a bottle of anointing oil. She said my daughter got it over in Jerusalem when they went to the Holy Lands. And she said that God said, Hey man, I couldn't use it, but you can. Hey man, you know what happened that night? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Preaching the Bible. Brother Dennis Fleming was just a young man then. He and Sister Angie and his youngest daughter were just, just living. And she suffered with chronic asthma. I mean, she couldn't breathe. And that night, that baby was having a spell and she couldn't breathe, Jeff. I witnessed it. I don't want to talk about it. That night, Sister Angie Blevins brought that little old girl up to the front of the church and everybody looked at her like she had two heads. And she began to cry and she said, God spoke to me and said for me to call for the elders of the church to pray and anoint my baby and lay hands on her. That He would heal her. There were people looking around all over that place and nobody spoke up. I thought, my God. God said, you got the oil. <laughs> yeah. He said, you got the oil. I brought it to you. I just jumped up and I said, well, I don't know how many believed it, but I do. God sent me a bottle of oil. And that night that baby was a crying and a wheeze and it couldn't breathe. And when the men of God stepped out and put the oil on her and began to pray, you could hear her lungs stop wheezing. Amen. She stopped crying. They set her down. She ran all over that church. Amen. I saw God put your back in place. Ain't no joke. Standing right here, there was a knot in his back. He couldn't hardly. You almost had to crawl in this church that morning. Did you know that? Not as big as my fist. The elders of the church anointed him with oil and prayed over him. And I know what I know because I had my hand on the back on his back of that knot. You want to tell them what happened? You want me to tell them? All at once, praise God, heaven began to move. And he come down like a light and bolt. I mean, I was a team we have in church. And you know what happened? That knot began to move. I found it. I had my hand on it. That knot went right back into place. And his spine was just as straight as an arrow. You know what? God fixed it. Amen. 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 He's had trouble since. God didn't promise you you wouldn't have trouble. Amen. Right. He fixed it once. What'd you tell that young right back there? God gave her one young, and what makes you think He can't give her another? Amen. If God fixed it once, what makes you think that God can't fix it again? Huh? Amen. Amen. Do we trust God? I trust Him. You know why? God has never lied to me. He's never let me down, Jeff. He's never done anything to me, amen, that would cause me not to trust my God with everything. Are you listening to me? 
trust. Do you trust him, Miss Moore? I, I'm gonna hush. Jerry, I, that's some powerful stuff. I appreciate you, bro. This ain't a coincidence. This ain't a coincidence, people. God didn't come down to Sunday school class for coincidence. He's going to come by to do business. Amen. Amen. I could preach on that this morning. But mm. you know, there's three or four places in the Bible. I didn't read it. You can look them up. It says it said that Abraham's faith was imputed unto him for righteousness. That's what made Abraham righteous. Short book. There's three or four places I know of for sure. I read them. This morning it says the just shall live by faith. And a lot of people, and you may be one, I was, I've been one of them, you may be one of them this morning, they I'm alright with God, you know, everything's good. I'm saved, everything's I'm up on the mountain, everything's going good. And you and you waver it's your faith. Well then you you are not you ain't right with God if your faith is a waver. And I, I you say, well, that's pretty stout. Well, that's just how important how the faith in God is. That's how. That's why it says the just shall live by faith. And you think about that. To be, to be considered just with God is a big deal. That I means everything is good. Your soul's where it needs to be. Your, your life's where it needs to be. Your soul's hid in Christ and everything's good to go. You're justified with and by God. And it says the just shall live by faith. Every step you take, it's by faith. Everything Amen. you do is by faith. If you're if you're justified and you're living by faith, then, ever, then, then everything you do is trusting God. Amen. Everything you do is trusting God. And you say, well, I can't everything I do. I can't just go trust God with every little thing. Yeah, you can. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You have to. It ain't that you, it's not a question of whether you can or you can't. You you have to. That, that's how this works. That's how your faith works. That's how that's how I work. And I didn't say that's how you're supposed to work. That everything you do, it, you you have to trust God. You, you have to you have to know that uh, uh, that 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 when my wife and young leaves the house and I'm not with them to protect them and to drive them and to be there, I have to trust God. There ain't nobody else going to do it. I have to trust God. I have to trust God that, 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 that this morning what He gave me that I, I just happened to be reading this morning uh, not know, I didn't know Kenny wasn't going to be here this morning. But I trusted God knowing that I, all right, God, if you want me to read this and have it on my mind, I'll read it. I have to trust God, knowing that, uh, that, that, that that everything's not not. I don't believe in coincidences. I have to trust God, knowing that every everything happens is part of His plan. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Live by it. It's not. The, the, it don't say the just shall get up in the morning and have a little bit of faith and go on about their day. It don't say the just shall have faith on Sunday morning and then. Whatever Monday brings is fine. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Not staggering. Not, not wavering. Not guessing at the promises of God. But living by I, 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 One of the biggest ones I like is He never leave me nor forsake me. Because I can tell you right now, sometimes I, I get down pretty, pretty, pretty low. Sometimes I get down... <laughs> I, or places I or not or shouldn't be as far as my spirituality and it ain't a good place to be but I know God never said He'd never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. That helps me. You know why that helps me? Because I'm trying to live by it. Right. I'm trying to live by my faith by His promises. Uh, yeah. I, don't, don't stagger this morning at, the, at your faith in God. Don't stagger at the promises of God. If, if you know this book says something here's and I don't like saying this, but I'll say it. I, I, I don't know whether I would like it. If you don't think you're where you need to be to live your life by anything I've said or Dave's preached this morning, fix that first. Amen. Amen. There's no shame in that. I have to do it. I, 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 it'd be embarrassing. It would embarrass me to death if you knew how many times somebody called me want me to pray and I'd have to fix myself where I could pray. It would, it would embarrass me if you really knew how many times that happened. Amen. Come on. Fix it this morning. If you won't go on living justified by your faith in God, fix it. There's no shame in that. I told on this altar a while back. This altar's 
it's here to be used. It, it, it's, it, 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 use it. Fix yourself and go on. All this day preach this morning sounded real good, didn't it? Everybody boosted up a little bit this morning. I can go on. This will help me. I'll have a little more faith. Not till you fix something that's wrong. But if there ain't nothing wrong, then go on and leave it. But if there's something wrong, fix it. You're supposed to live by faith. If you consider yourself justified by God, you're supposed to be living by this faith I, I taught on the days preached on. You're supposed to be living by it according to the Bible. Amen. Can I say something, brother? Go ahead. I'm done, preacher. Just stay right there just a minute. You know, in everyday walk, he, he talked about everything that you do. Whether you, whatever it is, if you ask God to show you, God will show you. A while back, me and my wife, we were praying about a, a, a better car. We've been traveling all over the country, and our old cars is getting to where they just about wore plumb out. They're still about wore out, amen. Sometimes you don't know if they're going to make it to West Jefferson and back. That's just the way it is. It's by the grace of God. But we prayed that God would would uh, help us get us a, a better car. So we got to pray. And we got to pray and I asked her what she wanted. And she decided on a Subaru. And we prayed about the color. And she decided she wanted a white one. And, uh, just what she wanted. So we went over to and, she, and Now listen now. And we prayed real hard that God would help us because I don't want to get in a bind financially or any other way that will keep me out of the house of God or keep me out of fellowship with God. Amen. amen. We prayed about this thing. And my wife prayed about, amen, what? We don't have much money. We have to borrow the money to get this car. Amen. And praise God, we prayed about the payments, what God would give us one for. We could just buy it, you know, and get us one make the payments on it so we wouldn't bring a reproach to the name of the Lord. And she prayed about it and God showed her what the payments would be and how much we could buy it for. And we went over to Subaru place and they act like we was going to steal the thing. They wouldn't let us even get in the car unless there's somebody with us. Amen. Watched us and then we sat down at the desk. And my wife, anybody that knows my wife, she's sitting right here. And she's one of the most humble people that I've ever met in my life. Amen. Come on. And she believes God. And she walks for God. Never heard her speak up. Never heard her get excited. But that day that fellow, the salesman, sat across the desk from us. And he slipped us a piece of paper and he said, what do you think you want your payments to be? My wife wrote down what God told her. Slipped it back to him. He went off a deep end. He said, let's be realistic. That can't happen. She said, I prayed about it. I saw it. More. <laughs> and I thought, buddy, you pushed the wrong button. I just sat back and grinned because I know what was coming. <laughs> Woo! She's faithful. God's faithful. She said, let me tell you, I prayed about it. That's what God said, and it will happen. He said, let's get realistic. God's one thing, but this is finance and this is numbers. Honey, let me tell you something. My God's in control. I want numbers. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. We got in the car. She's feeling pretty low. I said, don't let some jerk learn what God told you to do. That's right. <laughs> that Saturday, we're sitting out at the house. She's looking on the internet about some cars. And, boy, I don't know, popped up a little white Subaru. Just like the one we just drove. Just like it. I mean, just like it. Bristol, Tennessee. I called the family. He said, come on over and look at this thing. We went over and looked at it. Here's the one owner. Had less than 4,000 miles on it. And the guy's wife decided she wanted a fancier one. So they traded this in on a brand new one. Had still the factory warranties on it. Everything, it looked like it had never been touched. 
The guy didn't know me from Adam, pitched me the keys. He said, take her down to 81. Run her hard, see how she runs. I said, ain't you going to go with me? No, he said, I don't need to go with you. Drive it. We were driving that thing, and we were coming back down high mean, and we were running. You don't know what tells me to run one, I'm going to try that. And that thing will run. We were coming back into the parking place there, and God told us, that, you buy it. So this is the number. We sat down, we talked. They made us a price. And I thought, this is ridiculous, but God, this is what you do. I said, tell you what I'll do. This is what I'll give you. He called the boss man in there. I said, I prayed about it. We prayed about it. We told him what happened over there. Now, if this man had jerked us around about our faith, we went somewhere else. If you're dealing with somebody that don't believe in your God, leave them and go find somebody that does. Amen. Amen. This man said, I want you to pray. I pray about everything. I thought, look out, man. <laughs> and did you know that car was sitting in my driveway in our name before the law never passed? <laughs> Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Exactly what she asked for. Exactly for the money God said. Exactly for the payments God said. Don't tell me that my God can't work things out. Amen. 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 But you didn't you can't waver in your faith. She could have been downhearted and still driving. Amen. She might have been having to ride a bicycle this morning. <laughs> Well, now that fellow got on the wrong side of my wife real quick because he questioned the God that she believes in. Are you listening to me? Are you pushed around by every wind of doctrine? Or are you settled? You can't trust God. You can't have faith in God if you're not settled. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've got to be settled. Things will happen in your life to settle you. To get you to the place that you can believe God solely. Hmm? It's for our good. I could tell things, I could tell stories all morning long where God had sent us, Jeff. I'll tell you one more, and then I'm going to hush. We'll, we'll have church. I feel like having church. I don't know about everybody else. As a young preacher, God sent me here for revival. You remember that revival? Lester was sitting right here on the bench. Jerry and Michelle. Hey man, I just I didn't really know who you was, just to be honest with you. But I had been praying and God told me to go down to the Carson's Woods. He's having a picnic for a little old lady down there. And he said for me to go down there and, pre and, and preach. He said, he said, you go preach. Well, I was in revival here. And I told Brother Lester, I said, tomorrow night you're going to have to find somebody to fill in for me because God's sending me down to the Carson Woods. We got down there. You remember that meeting? Now, we had church, didn't we? It was Michelle's grandma. Come on, you tell me how God works. That night, there was an elderly man there fixing the face heart surgery. was not right with God. That man got saved that night in that front yard. While we were praying, woo, God spoke to me. He said, in the morning, it's on Saturday night, Tony, I'm about to fly. He said, in the morning, you take your horse and go to Comer's Rock, Virginia. And he said, I'll have somebody riding a black horse that you need to pray with. My God. I told him to pray for him. Sunday morning come, I loaded up my horse early and I started down through Lansing. Got down there in Arizona, <coughs> Jeff Iceland, and a whole bunch of them sat there at the car wash waiting on me to come through. Now I believe with all my heart they would just go with me and see if I was free. <laughs> we got over there. Jeff, you remember that day? It's calling for tornadoes in that country, black as pitch. I've never seen such a storm coming down that valley. It's about to blow everything away. We got over there and there was horse trailers lined up and nobody to be seen. We sat in there, me and my daughters and Jeff and a bunch of us. Hey Amen. And I was standing there and I thought, 
Well, I'm going to have to ride in a tornado to fire these people. And all at once, there was a trailer pulled in and parked in behind us. The second horse off of that trailer was a black horse. I swallowed hard, and before I could get to that trailer, this trailer pulled in, had two black horses on. Randy Jones, you know me, I ain't got a lick of sense. We swallowed hard, and then we went down through there, and I looked around, here come my whole bunch behind me, Jeff, and my youngins, and a whole bunch is riding with us, and they followed me right down there. There's a young woman standing there, Thomas, and I told her, I said, ma'am, you don't know me, and I don't know you. But I said the God I served told me last night to come down here that there'd be somebody riding a black horse that I needed to pray for. And as I got that out of my mouth, the trailer door slammed, and there's an elderly man come around that trailer with tears are running off into the parking lot. He's reaching out to me, and he said, Preacher, he never met me, but he knew God had sent me. He said, Preacher, it's me. Hey, man, and all at once, hey, man, them girls is riding the black horses. We had church, didn't we, Jeff? We got down and began to pray. God delivered that old man. Not only did he deliver him, but he saved one of the girls. What if I hadn't believed God's report? There would have been blood on my hands. Do you believe God? Amen. How's your faith this morning? It's pretty weak. It ought to be increased by now. Amen. Come on, if you've got problems this morning you need to you need to pray this altar is open this morning it's open he's here he knows about you more than it do you know the but i started to say something and he quoted the bible said thank you lord would it be another the bible said i know what you have need of before you even ask but you know what he said all them that ask receive it thank you lord would there be another in this morning? Thank you, Lord. Come on, my God, we're fixing to have church, man. Come on. Do you trust God? Come on, does anybody else need to pray this morning? Come on. Do you need to pray? Do you need to pray this morning? Come on. God didn't come to play games. He wasn't a coincidence that he didn't come. Thank you, Lord. He wasn't a coincidence that Jerry taught on what he taught. Come on. This morning, we're about to have meeting. Come on, would somebody else be obedient to God's drawing power? The Bible said, They that come must come believing that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Honey, come on, God will meet you here. He met here in the house of God. Anybody else, come on, do you need a touch from God? Come on this morning. My God, teach you, Billy. There's a drawing power in the house of God. Would there be somebody else? Why God's a dealing this morning? Amen. Come on. Somebody hurts you, somebody hindered you. Come on. Would there be somebody else? Come on. My God, can't you feel it? But listen to me, church. My God, somebody ought to be honest. Somebody ought to be obedient. God's people ought to be obedient. Say, I trust Him, preacher. Why ain't you moved yet? God's dealing with hearts all over this congregation this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel that? Amen. Everyone, it moves. It gets stronger. Can I get an amen? Oh, God's looking for somebody. Amen. That'll believe Him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. What do you need? Come on. Come on. While these young are praying. Amen. Come on. Praise God while they're praying. Ah, oh, come on this morning. Somebody. Somebody needs to pray. Come on this morning. Call on God. Do you believe Him? Do you know He'll open heaven? Do you know that this morning? Do you, let me ask you this. Do you know that God will open heaven for you? Amen. For you. Say, preacher, I ain't sure. Why don't you come and make sure this morning? Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm persuaded that He's able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. Amen. 
My God, this is church, people. Can't you feel it? The Lord's come to meet with us this morning. Come on. Come on, praise God. Humble your heart. Come on. Are you where you ought to be with God? Come on. Say, preacher, I just ain't exactly where I ought to be. Why ain't you now? What's a holding you back right now at this moment? Say, preacher, I don't know. Well, praise God, I can tell you what. The devil don't want you to move this morning. Can't you feel it? Come on. Praise God, I'm talking about. It's still power from on high. He said to tarry at Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Hey, man, let me tell you something this morning. God is a deliverer. God's a restorer. God's God. Hey, God can build it up. He can take care of it this morning. He's a healer. He's a savior. He's a rock. Amen. He is my savior. He's a fountain in the weary land. He's a drink of water in the desert. The Bible said an oasis in the desert. Amen. There's a place in a dry and dusty place. Thomas David said you can get a drink of water. That's beyond this world, amen. Praise God, God's a moving. Do you know what God wants for you? He wants you to rise up above the plateau you've been walking. And God be what God wants you. Can I get an amen? Do you believe God? Amen. God done a miracle in your life not long ago. Amen. When you said there wasn't no way, God said there's a way. Amen. Did you know God's able to change hearts of man? He's able to change your mind and their direction. Can I get an amen? Amen. You're talking about faith not wavering. You think about how Abraham, he spent many, many years waiting to have a child. Yes, sir. Didn't waver. He no. climbed all the way to the top of a mountain to Bless take him, his son's life and give it to God on an altar. And he didn't waver the whole way up that mountain knowing what he was going to Come have on. to do. You think of the faith that he had. I'd like to have just one ounce of what that man had. Amen. Come get it this morning, Amen. Bro. Come on. Amen. Come on, let me tell you something. Faith is when you begin to believe God's Word. Come on. And when you can see it worse, can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm preaching this morning? I didn't read He said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When the old man of God begin to expound upon what is God that I served done in the Word of God, it's already documented and written down. It ain't a storybook. It's documentation of what really happened. Amen. Even old Joe heard an old preacher preaching. Amen. Some people said it was just written down for us. But the Bible said there was a man and his name was Joe. And I did an amen. A just and an upright man to assure thee. God trusted Joe. You say you trusted God, you trust God, but does God trust you? Yeah. Mm, well, that's a big statement. Can God trust you? Has He seen something in your life that He knows He can trust you with? I hope nobody gets mad at me for preaching, but I'm, I feel like preaching. The devil came, was walking to and fro, and he accused God, he accused God's people. He told God, he said, "I've walked to and fro, and I found none just." You know what God said? God didn't waver. God said, "You consider my servant Job a just and an upright man, a sure of evil." Come on! Have you considered him? And you know why the devil hadn't considered Job? It's because he couldn't get close to him. And you know why? Because God had a hedge around him. Come on! God's had a hedge around him. He said if you'd take a hedge down, he said I'd have him to cuss you to your face. God! God could trust Job. God knew what Job would do. God said, all right, I'll take the hedge down. You can have all he's got, but you can't
Thomas Wife told him, he said, curse God and die. Yeah. He said, you talk as a foolish woman. Yeah. Yeah. The preachers came to Job. You know, it's, am it's amazing to me to how the self-righteous whenever people go to having trouble, Bless you. they automatically accuse sin. Come on, brother. Preacher. People in the church go to having trouble. People start saying, "Oh, they're sinning. They're doing something else not to do." The Bible said, "The trying is more faith. It's more precious than you." Amen. Amen. And I preach this man. I got a message, man. Come on. Just because people's having trouble, don't mean they've messed up people. Right? Amen. Hey man, maybe God's trusting you with something that you ain't never seen before. I'm sure Job didn't understand everything at the beginning. But he kept crying out, I know my Redeemer lives. The preachers came to him, and I thank God for a young preacher, hey amen, that had a, had a zeal of God and trusted God and had faith in God. A little oil like you, hey amen. The preachers began to tell him, said, Oh, Job said, Go ahead and repent. Go ahead and repent, hey amen. And little Elihu, the Bible said he was sitting there and he's, he's, he was like a wine bottle without a being. He was about to explode. Amen. He began to speak and he said, Job is not sin, as you perceive. He said, but it was God that sent this to him. Can I get an amen? Can God trust you with anything? Can I get an amen? And I found out in life, these people you can't trust with nothing. <laughs> you can ask them to pray for you. <laughs> And the next day, there'll be 500 people talking about you like a dog. Amen. Put me down. He told you, said, God sent this to me. You know, when it was all over, according to the Word of God, God Job was richer than he ever was, had more yeah. children than he ever had, had more cattle than he ever had. God restored. He rebuilt and he restored it. Amen. It ain't over yet, y'all. People ain't seen nothing yet. I'm telling you, them that's living for God, I believe God's, amen, proving them to people that they, that, hey, he proved that Job was his. Amen. Huh? Just cause your faith. Let me tell you something, okay? The Bible said when men cast their name out as evil, false. He said, rejoice. Leap for joy. The key word in that scripture is falsely. Now, if they're talking about you and you're guilty, you better be. But if they're talking about you because you're standing for Jesus, go ahead and lift for joy and shout to be. That's a difference. Eh? That's just like being saved and not being saved. There's a difference. Amen. That's just like saying, praise God, that you've got it, you lose it, you can do this and you can do that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got it, you've got it. And if you've got it, you've got the faith to live for God. And if you ain't living by faith, you ain't with God anyway. Can I get an amen? He said, without my spirit, they're not of mine. It'll separate you. Yeah, It'll separate you. Those people sit in the church every Sunday all over the world. That's been lost ever since they joined the church. Amen. 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 And you know what the devil's doing? He's using that against you because God has dealt with you so many times. Amen. And you know what the devil says? You can't know these people thought you were saved. Amen. This is how it works. This is how simple it works. I was working for a lady one time. They moved here from a different country. And she said, I want you to pray for my, my church and my husband. And I said, well, I, I want to know what I'm praying for. I don't just pray. I, I want to know what I'm asking God for. She said, we're getting ready to start with I said, I for that. She said, no way. She said, we moved here, joined this church, got baptized, and my husband is a deacon of this church. And she said, I'm worried me and my pastors are praying that God would save him in this revival. You know what scares me the most? It's the pastor knew. Yeah. Yeah. He knew he was lost when he baptized him. He knew he was lost when he joined the church. And he knew he was lost when he put him in as a deacon. Is that not bothering you? You know what the first qualification for a deacon is? 
It's to be spirit filled. So where'd you get that preacher? I want to get some qualifications. Go over the old Bible. Go over the first when it first started getting ordained deacons. He said for the church to go choose them seven spirit filled men. Spirit filled. Not spiritual. Spirit filled. I can preach on that, but I can go to I'm gonna try to hush. I've took long enough in this Sunday school class. Praise God, I'm telling you right now, if this word does not stir you up. If the Word of God does not stir you up in some kind of manner, you better get a hold of something. Amen. And I'll tell you why. Because this Word is Christ. The Word of faith is not thee, even in thy mouth. Huh? He said, if you'll confess the Lord Jesus from your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all. I'm going to try. Lord, I could preach all day on that right there. But I got one verse in the minute I want to preach on. I, I tell you, I love you. You know what my, my heart desire is? Amen. That praise God, Randy Jones, that you could pray for me in heaven as Father. All over me, amen. Come on, say, preacher, you've lost your mind. I want people praying for me just like this youngin' right here. Amen. Come on. I like for her to pray for me because you know why? She's got a pure heart and she can see what she's praying about. The last time I ever heard a little youngin' step out in the aisle of a church and say, pray for my grandpa. He's lost. And he went to crying, little fellow, a little bit about to about this side. Yeah, you remember that man? Yeah. <laughs> went to crying and he stepped out into the, the revival, right out in the church, and he started crying. He said, Preacher, pray for my grandpa. He's lost, and I don't want him to go to hell. Amen. We got down and we prayed. The next night his grandpa come to church. I saw that old man and hey man, everybody thought was some means to break down and go to crying. Hey Amen. You see, I remember the night very well when worth a man ham come out of the bed and come to meet Jesus and his world changed. Can I get him? Hey Amen. Come on. It's because somebody with a childlike faith, hey Amen, believe God. I've been in this thing a lot longer than I thought I had. Amen. I can remember these young, this sister right here, and Brother Nathan back there, Tom. I can remember when these little bitty things. I can remember when they was that size right there, Brenda. Amen. We've been in this thing a lot longer than we thought. Amen. We used to go by and talk to Brother Tom. Amen. When he was a painted car, we'd have church. And then, it's, it, then these youngins, amen. Praise God, just running all over the place. Now look at him, sitting in the house of God. I love you, people. My prayer is that your faith would be increased today that you can believe God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to hush. I'm going to hush. Whatever you need today, I believe God's got it. Believe God's got it. If you've got something in your way to hinder this service this morning, I'd get her out, praise God, before the preaching starts. Amen. Huh? Come on, you need God. You know, I preached a message here a while back in this church, and amen, I've come to party. Come to party. Did you come to party this morning? Huh? Come on. Did you come to have a good time in the house of God? Said, I ain't come to. You don't go to church to have a good time. Oh, yes, we do. Amen. Over there, amen, when the prodigal son came back to the father, and the Bible said he told his, son, his servants, he said, Bring forth the fatty calf. He was in the stall already waiting for him to come back. But his son was jealous, amen. He began to, amen, murmur against God. And you know what he said? Huh? Come on. You know what he said? He said, what I have is thine, what mine is thine, and has it not always been here? Amen. There's a calf in the stall for every one of us this morning to make merry if we want it. I come to party this morning with Jesus. I don't know about everybody here. Said Jordan to say that I come to make merry, amen, with the 
Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hush. Praise God, I'm going to try my best to hush. You better get your song because it ain't going to quit. <laughs> uh, before we get started, uh, God tell you what God, what, happened, what God done for me this week. Uh, been out on the road something about all week and everything. And, uh, Tuesday night stuff there, I got down, uh, uh, was supposed to load out at uh, 8 o'clock. Tuesday night. Well, got down to Wilsburg and they, uh, they told me the uh, load wasn't going to be ready. Uh, they wasn't ready for me down there to be down there at 12. We got down there and uh, was, was hoping to try to get on the rest for it, went down there and thing. Didn't work out, I just got talking to people and everything. Uh, got to put people in my life to talk to and everything, just talk about the Lord and stuff. Well, I get a uh, call and they said, well, it's going to be ready to let him come on. And uh, got down there and got hooked up and everything. And uh, pulled up on scales, it was overweight. It took him two hours to get 600 pounds of meat off of the trail. Uh, and so that put me two hours even farther, farther behind. Supposed to be back at Thursday to load that out at 4 p.m. Well, the way that everything worked out uh, with these electronic laws and stuff, I couldn't be over there until 6. Well, then when uh, I called at 6 o'clock, and uh, I said, I to ask about my load. He goes, well, uh, that we've had some problems. They took the trailer out there and dropped it. And when they dropped the trailer, uh, the driver came back to the mine and the trailer had turned over. The tanker had turned over. Well, uh, went ahead and uh, uh, they, they called me back in a few minutes and said it was, it was ready to come on again. Well, got over there, pulled back on the scales again. It was over a thousand pounds. Well, uh, I called. And uh, we'll send somebody right over. It was almost two hours before anybody showed up to start unloading. So that put me way down being late. And my heart's desire probably now was being back the time to go to singing at Mount Fern. Things, things just didn't work out that way. But God put me up down the road this far. I got into Ohio. It was uh, getting fairly close. So I was within. 50 miles of where I was supposed to be at. I was, uh, I was talking to Brother Tony on, on the phone. All of a sudden, explosion under, under, under my driver's seat. There's an arrow I'm busting on the driver's seat. And if anybody's ever drove, drove a truck, when you go to lose an arrow, that truck ain't gonna go very far. Well, but this is how God works. When that arrow I exploded, I looked up the road. There was an exit. And you know, well, most of the time when you get off an exit, you just drive straight across the road and pull off the side of the road uh, on the other side of the, up, on the long ramp. Well, when I got to the end of the exit, this is one of the exits you couldn't just drive straight across the road. You had to turn right. Listen to this. You had to, there's only one way you can turn. And when you look in the God, when you're, when you're trying to look at God, they have one way the trouble comes that you can turn, and that's to God. That's to the right. Yeah. But when I turn to the right, it wasn't far down the road. It was one of them. You had to go so far before you, you could make a U-turn. There's, there's no other way. There's no O'Reilly sitting there on the right. Well, I'm just around past the O'Reilly's. It was a man's auto. But God even made it where I could see past the building. I could see a parking lot on the other side of the building where his truck's sitting there. Let me know that I can get a truck and trailer in there. And when I pulled in there, pulled up our stuff and uh, Got to look and I, mean, I, uh, I was hoping that that like, thing wasn't going to drop air pressure before he was going to walk me up the road. But God led me right into a place and uh, got the seat and took a part in where I could see what was going on. I stuck the line back together. And God put it in my heart to go in, go in the store. And I got to go in there and tell a man behind the desk how God let me in there that day and how he blessed me to get there. Yeah. And for no other reason, and until this few minutes ago, I didn't realize that the trailer turned over and all that had to do with, with this morning. Or me tell, telling that man. I, all I think I can tell the man is, is where the line broke on me at the stand of the road. But I said this morning, God worked all week for me to tell that man. Sure. But I think I believe that. 
I praise His holy precious name. Bless you. So, what I'm saying is when you when things sort of turn upside down, you don't understand. Just trust in God. And always turn to the right. Turn to Him. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Thank you. 
job là Touch each one of them, Lord. There'll be one here today, God, that don't know you and the to sin, Lord, that just slipped away, Father. Reach down and touch them, God. You don't give a promise of tomorrow, God. This could be the last opportunity, God. Take the money and use it the way you have it to be used, Father, through the church, Lord. God, this brother daily in the after service, Lord, give him the word you have him saying us, accept your hearts to understand, Father. We ask it all in the holy and precious name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Jack, just hold up just a minute before you go. We're going to say happy birthday. Some bass game birthdays or anniversaries since last time was here. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Jack's 79 today. In the hole. <laughs> Looking good for his age, Jake. <laughs> 
never know. Anybody got a song on you, Hall? Go ahead, Marcy. Uh, in two weeks, the parents and the students that are in my class and Trisha's class, we would like to invite you please to stay after and let us practice in the sanctuary and we'll have sandwich stuff for the parents and the kids. So we need to practice in here something that the, the teens are going to do for fifth Sunday and we assumed it'd be easiest just to stay after a little while after church one day. So that's in two weeks on the 17th Sunday. The, of course, at the end of the month, it's fifth Sunday, we invite everybody to come back and see what the youth has in store for you. And uh, April the 27th is on a Saturday. We're going to have Faith Fun Day and invite all the kids and parents if you want to come to just come and we'll do some lessons and crafts and have pizza that day and stay about five or six hours and just fellowship with each other. You keep us posted, Melissa. Don't let us forget that. Okay. Uh, we'll be starting. Me and Brother Josh Jones will be in revival out at uh, uh, Bethel out there at uh, Lonnie Famous Church. It'll be the seventh of uh, April. So don't forget that. Me and Brother Josh Jones will be preaching that week. So pray for us. It's coming pretty fast. The Bible is get ready. To to uh, crank up and be afraid about revival here. Amen. There's a revival stirring for us and, and we need to move when God says to have it. Amen. And, and, uh, I know we we don't schedule things, but when God says to move, Amen. we're going to have revival. So uh, just pray for that. Just keep praying. Anybody got a song on your heart? This guy needs a song. Come right up. You pray for this little sister. <laughs> <laughs>
said and done brings me right to the scripture that's on my heart this morning brother Tom you'll find it over in the book of Psalms I believe about the 46th chapter I believe it is you pray just a few minutes God being my helper I'd like to find this there's one verse I want to preach on this morning God being my helper and everything that's been said and done everything that's been spoke ever song hey amen it's amazing how God just puts things in order brother Robert Right down to what sister, amen, what she said just then, right down to the letter of reading this scripture, amen. I want you to listen close, child of God, to what the scripture says over here in the book of Psalms, amen, down at the 46th verse, chapter, amen. 
And I want to read you one verse of Scripture in this, this blessed book. And I, I want you to read this. And listen to what it says. Amen. And I, I just want to preach on one, one verse, Brother Jerry. And I want you to listen to this. Amen. And pray God short of God somebody can refer to this Scripture this morning. Amen. Short of the goodness somebody amen, can shout hallelujah because of this one verse. Short of the God that somebody amen, can say amen to this one verse of Scripture. The Bible said this in the first verse. He said, God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Can I get an amen? A very present help in trouble. Now I want to talk about, I want to preach just a minute. Lord, my mind went crazy this morning. I got up and I began to read this Scripture and it had been on my mind all morning and praise God what I would say. And the more that's been spoken and the more that praise God been sung and testified and the more people has prayed brought more to my mind. I want you to get a hold of this child of God. The Bible say, man, don't come just sometimes as a day, but sometimes as years. The Bible said, oh, now the Bible said he was a very present help in trouble. Can I get an amen? I've preached to many a day about an ever-present God. He's ever-present and never absent. He's always on the scene. He's always on the
because she had faith Amen. to push through the crowd. There's no doubt she was weak from the struggle for 12 years, but there was a multitude around him. As she pressed through, I can almost see her shaking hand, Keith. All strength was gone. Anybody knows when you're losing blood, you get weak. Yeah. I believe she's weak, amen. Couldn't help herself. But she pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. Amen. And God delivered again. Amen. Like the sister son of Adam. Now listen. Amen. Amen. It's a little thing for God. Your problems is a little thing. Amen. 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 I don't care how long you've been there. Right. It's still a small thing for God when He touches. Amen. Twelve years she'd suffered and all at once prayed to God she was healed. Amen. The Bible said she knew within herself immediately she was healed. Not only did she know it, now let me tell you something. You don't sneak into this thing and get right, amen. When you get right, not only do you know it, but God knows it. Amen. Amen. And I get it, amen. amen. Come on. The Bible, and, I, and I'm going to go one step farther. I'll go even deeper than that. I believe Tony Eller, they that not only do you know it and God knows it, but I believe all heaven knows it. Amen. And you know why I say that? The Bible said there's more rejoicing in heaven over one that come to repentance than all the 99 just. I when Jesus holds a book and writes a name down, I believe heaven rejoices. Can I get an amen? Somebody shout a little bit. The Bible said, Amen, that Jesus stopped. And he turned around and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said it was a crowd, Lord. They're throwing you. Here's a crowd that's touching you. Did you say that? Somebody touched me. Amen. Yeah. You know why he knew? Because virtue went out of him. Yeah. 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 The virtue of God touched yeah. this woman and her yeah. the fountain of blood stopped. Immediately, yeah. right then. Amen. She was healed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. By her faith. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 well, I'm going to preach this a minute. Somebody ain't getting it. The Bible said, Amen, and praise God, he went on. And he went into where Jairus' daughter lay. You see, you think it's a coincidence you're here today. A lot of people read the. Kayla's got a, a, a little Bible uh, for kids, Amen, and. and uh, Kids' Bible. She's been reading the stories out of the book to, to Laurie Bell, amen. And she was telling me this week some what she'd learned, and she said, Watch her dad. And she was a singing to me, and this baby was doing all the marks of, amen, uh, this little light of mine. She was a dancing and giving it everything she had, Jeff. And she said, If my baby can learn that song and the signs of that song, she can learn this Bible. Amen. 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 Come on now. Praise God. Listen to me. And praise God. She began to read her all the stories in the Bible. And praise God. You moms and dads, don't forget, amen, the parts in the Bible that's put there, amen, to open the key to the mysteries of the Word of God. Amen. Old Samson over there. I ain't going to preach. I ain't going to preach about Samson. I'm going to preach about what God done for Samson. Amen. Amen. Praise God. First of all, there's a carcass of a lion. I ain't going to preach on that. With honey in it, amen. There's a bee in it. And there's honey in it, but it goes on. And the Bible said, amen, you know most grown-ups don't even know what Samson slew the Philistines with in the first battle. It was a jawbone of an ass. And in the hollow place of that jawbone, there was water for the man of God to drink. Can I get an amen? He didn't just find that jawbone. God commanded that little ass to lay down and die on the road to where the old man would find an amen and have something to fight with. Ever present help. Yeah. Ever present help. In trouble. <coughs> I thought about a lot of things in the Word of God. And I thought about it. Now your faith's going to be increased. You'll listen to what I'm preaching. The Bible said, Old Daniel prayed. And the Bible said that the king made a decree that they couldn't pray to no other gods except for the king. And, and amen. These deceitful people tricked the king into signing the decree. 
that the meats and the Persians signed, amen, it would be put to death. Anybody caught praying, amen, it would be caught to be put to death. Amen, and be put into the lines, the den of lines. And praise God, the Bible said it troubled the king after he figured out what they had done. They tricked him into doing this, amen. You see, human beings, amen, and people that you're walking around in this world will trick, connive, and make you do things that you wouldn't normally do as a child of God. Can I get an amen? And after you're in it, you're trapped. Can I get an amen? But I'm glad that there's an ever-present hell in trouble. Can I get an amen? He is my refuge, and He is my, hey, my strength. Now listen to what I'm preaching. Hey, man, old Daniel, he never quit praying. He wasn't ashamed of the decree. He wasn't ashamed of the laws of the land. He wasn't afraid of what they'd do to him. He owned his window toward the holy city, and he prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. The street Hebrew boy would go over there to work, y'all. Made a stand for God. And in the society they lived in in that day and time, there was a furnace, and anybody that went against the king was burned up. The Bible said at that time that he did it seven times harder than it had ever been here. <laughs> Bound the men of God hand and foot because he wouldn't bow down. Throw him into the furnace. It's going to make an uh, example of him. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Ever yeah. present hell yeah. in trouble. Amen. I'm going to preach a minute and talk to yeah. you. The Bible said, said that, ain't, that ain't never, I mean, if you ain't got done preaching, amen. The Bible said that they cast them bound hand and foot into the furnace. And it was heated seven times hotter than it had ever been heated. And the Bible said it was so hot it even slew the soldier that put them in the furnace. But amen, the old king sat up on his throne thought he'd done something, hadn't he? But the Bible said he looked down there and he said, Did we not cast three men into the furnace bound? But he said, I see four men loose and unburned. And a fourth man is locked in the He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered Jesus in another room? Saved him under the wings of God. This is what I tell people. When you dedicate your life to God, get out of the mess you're in. Live for Jesus. Got to get an amen. Change your life. Do everything in your power to change what you're in. So you get in tune with this book. And if you're right with God, your heart's desire is to please God. Can I get an amen? And He will be your buckler. He'll be your shield. He'll be your almighty. He'll be your rock of events. I'm here to tell you, you 
you go to tell them what the book says, it makes people mad. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, he'll pierce to the divine. Start with any two-edged sword, brother. He'll divide, he'll cut, he'll slice. But the Bible said the truth will set you free. Can I get a big man? Come on. And when the truth sets you free, you're free indeed. Ever present hell. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Ever present hell. Come on. Amen. When your life feels like it's fell apart, there's help this morning. Ever present. He's never left nobody. He's still right there. Praise God. If there's anybody ever left anybody, it's you that's turned your back on God. Can I get an amen? It's you that's backslid. If you ain't close to God this morning, it ain't God's fault. He's right where you walked off and left. And you know what he's doing? He got his arms out straight away for you to turn around and come back. Can I get an amen? He's waiting for you to come to your senses. Ever present hell. Even in the prodigal son, the scripture of the prodigal son, I see that ever present hell. The Bible said that the youngest son he squandered all that his father gave him. Wasted it on right and living, the Bible said. And he wrote and he didn't have nothing left. And the Bible said he, he joined himself to the citizens of that country. I believe with all my heart if you've ever been saved, you backslide on God, you try to join yourself back with the world, you're the most miserable person. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you why this morning. Now, I, I don't I don't preach doctrine. I preach Jesus Christ being crucified. Now listen to what I preach the book. You know why you're so miserable? It's because you'll never be in where you used to be. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because there's a seed of righteousness in your soul. Amen. That Jesus put in there, and you will never be in. You're miserable. Amen. And praise God, you can't fit in the house of God with sin in your life because there's some old preacher will jerk the cover off every time you go to church. Can I get it? And it seems like you know what he does. Amen. I've heard people say, you just pick me out and preach about me. And I'll just be honest with you this morning. I don't know a thing about nobody. Amen. Come on. Praise God. I don't know a thing about what you've done, where you've been, what you've said. I have no idea. But I know a God I said this once before and I said it. There's a plaque that I like to read and man wrote it. It's got a lot of meaning to me. But everybody's seen it. It's footprints in the sand. Everybody's seen it. And the man was praying to God and he said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? He said, in the hardest parts of my life, you left me. In the hardest times of battles, Lord, you left me. Oh my God. When I didn't think I could stand or walk, and Lord, I felt like I couldn't breathe for the battles that coming on, you left me, Lord. He said, when you left me, Lord, there was only one set of footprints. All the rest of my time in my life, Lord, and the good times, and all the good times, there's two sets of footprints, and you walked with me beside me. God said, Son, I didn't forsake you. The brother mentioned it, amen, Wednesday night. He said, should God forsake his people? He said, God forbid. Amen. amen. God spoke to him. He said, Son, I didn't forsake you. Amen. When there was only one set of book prints, that's when I was carrying you. And I did it, amen. Praise God, the ever-present help in the time of trouble. Troubles come and I can't find an answer. You ever heard that song? It's me again, Lord. I've got a problem I can't solve. I don't mean to worry you. 
But here I am asking something new. How's it go, kid? Yeah. Yeah. Comes from you. It's me again, Lord. How about you coming up here helping me sing that song with you? We'll sing what you know about that. I believe somebody this morning, with all my heart, is talking about having me. Well, there's been faith preached. There's been deliverance preached. There's been an Almighty God, amen, that can deliver you. And now everybody's testifying. It's maybe sung about. God delivers again. Amen. 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 She's talking about the little light of mine. Amen. I'm afraid some of God's people, amen, the light's pretty dim. Come and count it. Amen. 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 I heard an old preacher preach one time, Sister Amen. Brother uh, Smith Shepherd preached one time, and he preached about the light of God's people. And he said he grew up in this day at Randy, whenever they used the old, old, old lamps. And he said if you didn't trim the wick, Amen. He'd get the flame up and he'd smoke up the yeah. globe. And then said the lights in the house was dim. Amen. You couldn't see as good. But he said, praise God, when people would trim their lamps, amen, and clean the globe, he said it would light the whole house that they dwelled in. Can I get an amen? amen. If you if your light, amen, it ain't went out. You just got a you got a dirty globe. Can I get an amen? Can you see it's saying anybody? Come on, child of God. This is a day that God. Let us be glad and rejoice therein. Can I get a name Can't you feel the presence of an Almighty God? He's here today. Oh my God, I can feel heaven. Hey, man. Every present help, God ain't left you. He ain't went nowhere. You see the king and the prodigal son of the scripture prophet. The king was right where he always lived. And they had nothing changed in the castle. The servants had more bread than they could eat. They were happy to be a servant of the king. You know who moved? The prodigal moved. And you know what the Bible said? You know God's been waiting on us. You know what's been waiting on for us to come to our mind. I pray this would be about people's mind. I pray that God would stir up their pure mind by the way to remember. So they can remember. See, that boy, he got out there with the swine, and the Bible said he would have started to death and have a bit of a husband with the swine. You know what? The Bible said he came to himself and started to remember. You know what he remembered, brother? He remembered how good he was in the presence of the king. Amen. Come on. If you've ever tasted the goodness of God, you can't live without it. Come on. Hey, do you remember how good it was when God was a breathing upon you and you felt so good on the inside that you just couldn't help but to smile even in the hard time? Anybody know what I'm preaching? Amen. The boy said, Amen. He said, I remember the father's house, how the servants had bread to eat. Amen. Praise God. They had more than they even, even deserved. He said, I'll go back to the Father's house. Amen. He said, I'll pray to God. Pray to the Father. Father, I've sinned against me and against heaven. Just make me. I'm no, worth, worth, no longer worthy to be called thy son. He said, just make me as a hired servant. God had better plans than that. Amen. Amen. Listen, the Bible said the king saw him coming afar off. You know God's been waiting on somebody. Can't get an amen. He's been looking for you. Say, preacher, you crazy. He done sent the Spirit of God out to get you. I believe that with all my heart this morning. Now listen to me. I was in the room out to me. He didn't make him a servant. He put the robe on him, the ring on his finger, the shoes on his feet, and he put his arms around him and kissed him. They killed the fatty calf. Now let me tell you something. A lot of people will preach and teach that they had to put that calf up and fatten it up. It was already in the spot. It was already there. Everything you need is already there. Every present. I'm going to guess what you come on and sing a tip and sing a song, please. Come on. Bless them all. Tell you this morning, hey, not good. Amen. Tell you, be good to the same. He's answered our prayers. Amen. That guy who sat right beside me, I remember a day when we prayed hard, didn't we? And what did God do for us? God just come right down, wasn't He? To every present hell, didn't He fix things? 
My God, ain't he good? Ain't he been good to us? Amen. Amen. He's still good to me this yeah, morning. Amen. My God, I can feel His presence Amen. today. My God, He's the ever present help in the time of trouble. Amen. My God, is He saying, can't you feel it? Go ahead, young and sing this song. Listen to me. If you need to pray, don't Bless wait till tomorrow. Come on. Trouble's coming, I can't find an answer. Lonely nights I've spent in I need a turn. <laughs> I can't see it. Let me get my glasses. You probably the devil ain't getting this. Amen. Hey man, the devil ain't getting this. Let's get right over here. Hey man, you better listen. Let's start with this right here. It's me again, Lord. I've got a prayer. Let's see. An answer. I can't see it. It's me again, Lord. I got a problem I can't solve. Well, I don't mean to worry you, but here I am facing something new, and I need help that only comes from you. It's me again, Lord. Troubles come, and I can't find an answer. Lonely nights I spend in agony. You pray. I have no doubt of the pretty pray. I can't get it. I have no other friend that I can turn to. So here I am, Lord, back upon my knees. Listen, while he's saying, Do you need to pray? It's me again, Lord. I'm going through something that I. Can't face by myself. Come on. It's me again, Lord. I'm afraid. There's a fear fell on me, Lord. I, I need help. Come on, child of God. Woo, can't you feel it? Anybody else feel that? Draw in power of God. I want you to listen to me this morning. Ever present hell. He's right here this morning. What a super praise. Would you be another? He's right here. Come on. Come on. It's me again, Lord. Listen. I've got a prayer that needs an answer. It's me again, Lord. I've got a problem I can't solve. Come on. Well, you need to pray. Come on. I wouldn't wait five more minutes. And you know why? Because I believe God's open the windows of heaven. Hey, telling you this morning, I got this child. Bring it to me and lay it down. Would there be another one to pray? Would you come on? Come on. Praise God. While these children, did you feel that? While these children are moving, would you come? He's calling all these children home. Come on, so he can wrap his arms around you. Hey, man, give you help this morning. Everybody's got trouble. I've told him a million times in this house of God this morning. Everybody, including myself, Stand in need of something today. Can I get an amen? amen. Sister Brittany Slay is going to bury her grandpa this evening. She needs help. Amen. My God, can't you feel heaven a moving? My God, they say that people's going to have to face today that they didn't know they could make it through. Amen. Ain't you glad he's ever present, Sister Ray? Sister Louise ain't left us at you. We can testify this morning. <coughs> you know, sometimes I just can't hold together. Says you're the man of God. Sure I am. Elijah come to the place of life thought that he wanted to die. The Bible said he thought he was all his fault and left. Went down and sat down under the juniper tree and he asked God just to take him home and give me one of the He said, Lord, I'm only one left. Are you listening to me? We all get to the place, praise God, that we have hard times. Come on, people. 
Would anybody be honest? The thing about it is, everybody ain't honest. God cannot help you this morning if you're not honest with Him. Come on! God will not take it and fix it till you lay it down and give it to Him. Can I get an amen? Is it your fortress? Is it your, is it your stronghold? Is it your hell in the time of trouble? That little sister began to sing, God will live to me. You know, I'm all about preaching about the children of Israel. The Bible said they wandered around the wilderness for 40 years. Do you know what was so amazing about that? Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes wasn't more. You know what I believe, Kelly? I don't believe they ever got a son of birth. I don't believe it is. You say, preacher, you ain't got no scripture to back that up. I do. I do. You know why? Because they were present help to the sister Brady. Because you know what God done for them today? He walked over them a pillar cloud by day. They didn't get sunburned. And again, they did Come on, somebody say amen. And the Bible said, yeah, I've never been to the desert, but the Bible, according to the uh, all the books in the school that says that it gets down below freezing of the night, hot as the dickens of a day, and cold of the night. Did you know I don't believe they ever got cold of the night? You know why? Because the God that I was preaching about, the ever present help in the time of trouble, Rob, amen. The Bible said he went with him up the night by a pill of fire by night. Anybody see what I'm preaching? Ever present help in the time. Amen. When they come to a place in life, they're getting across over the Red Sea. They were about it being fit. In their mind, the Bible said, Amen. They were listening to it. They were standing there at the Red Sea. They couldn't go across. You ever been in something that you didn't know if you were going to make it through it or not? That you dreaded it Amen. so bad. And the devil can tell you in your mind, Oh, all the bad things are going to happen. And you know what's about the devil? He never tells you that God's gone. Did you ever notice that? The devil never tells you the good things. He always says, You might as well put your hands up and give up, brother. Everybody's against you. They have nobody like you. It's a lie. I'll say it's a liar and a father of the children. I'll say it's a liar. If I be for you, can be for you. Amen. Come on, never pray. I'm here, Thomas. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And he said, I will go with you to the end of this world. Amen. That means he's ever present. Can I get him? Somebody shout the victory this morning. Lord. I ain't done yet. The Bible said he got down to that place in life because he had no place to cross. They, they come on through. God brought them through the desert. Supply every least. Did you know that? Read the book. Even before they ever woke up in the morning, God had manna to the sustain for their day. Amen. God would have walked with you. He said, I don't know what you have to do before you even ask. Now listen, I'm still preaching. All of a sudden, they came down to the Red Sea and they were humans just like us. You ever been in the Bible that you just want to throw your hands up and say, I can't do it no more? I'm going to quit. I'm going to I don't quit. I've been there. I do it every other day. Short of Short. I think to myself, I'm done. I'm quitting. I just give it up. Forget it. Then I realize y'all ain't done. I'm sitting there came down to the Red Sea. They couldn't go across. And they couldn't go back because they turned around. And they looked back and the enemy was coming up the face behind them. You know what they done with the mind that says it's better if we die than he did. Moses went to pray to God and God doesn't have to pray to us. We gave to cry out to God and God said, Why cryst thou out to me? He said, Tell my people to go forward. And you know that must have sounded like old Moses was a nutcase. There's ocean. There's England. God said, Go on forward. We ain't got nothing to turn back to, man. 
Tomorrow's a new day. You know that. Amen. Mercy. New mercies. Tomorrow. Lamentation 3. You better read it. Amen. My God, that's some good preaching. I don't care who's doing it. And the Bible said it. God told Moses to reach forth his staff and man were crossing up and touched the water. The Bible said, you know what God done? The children of Israel were camped at the Red Sea. The enemy had come up so close that the enemy could have reached out and got a hold of them at any time that night. But the Bible said the angel that went with them by the day as a pillar of cloud moved himself and stood behind them. Ever present day. Amen. Amen. And did you know what he done? He blinded Pharaoh's eyes. He couldn't even see the children of Israel. I believe he walked around almost bumped into one another. That's how real I can see it. And couldn't see it. Amen. Amen. And you know people do it. People's always been people, King. From the beginning of time to now. But I'm glad that God has never changed. He's always been God. Amen. I believe we're just like the rest of us. They doubted a little bit. Worried all night long. Do you know what the Bible said? The Bible said if anything is not faith, it's sin. Amen. 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 I'm still in the book. Don't look at me like you're crazy. I believe in murmur. I believe in worry. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Whisper to the king. You know what happened the next morning? The Bible said God's working for them all night long. Every present day. The Bible said when they woke up, you know what the water did you do? Salute. The children of God. Stand up. Huh? And reverence yeah. to the power of God. Come on, people. Amen. Do you know what I'm preaching? Amen. 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 The Bible said they crossed on dry ground. Amen. So the devil thought he could see it. Old, old Pharaoh, he thought about well, that. But he went over. I'm going to. Amen. So he took off after him. And the Bible said that when the last foot of the children of God stepped out on the other side, God, did you know what? God slowed them down. Every present him. You know what he done for them? The chariot wheels fell off. And they were dragging. They couldn't have called God's people if they wanted to. Amen. God had his hand on them. So he preached me with, with all my heart. Read the book. The Bible said that the waters came in upon us. God turned the book and drowned every one that was an enemy in God's people. Ever present hell in the time of trouble. Amen. Ever present hell in the time of trouble. I think about a lot. There's been many a time my girls and been out by myself and I'd have to pray. And they not, they'll tell you they're sitting here as a dream. And I'll pray to many a night. And you know, my youngest is still sitting in the house of God, sitting here with my grandbabies. Praise God, God's took care of them. In the hard times of our life, He's been there ever present here. In the spots that I didn't think it was going to make it through, ever present here with Sister Darling. Amen. He done took me and asked me to things that's going to get you to another. Is anybody here? I'm, I've done preach my heart out this morning. I was wore out this morning. I love you. I got my up last night. I didn't, I didn't get it. Well, I was, went to bed about 2 30. I still awake this morning. I had a 3 o'clock. Just my eyes just went really shut. And it's like this. Yes. Every time I get them shut, they fall back up. And I thought, man, this is going to be a hard day tomorrow. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I've sat in the presence of God. Amen. 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 I have sat in the presence of God. I challenge you this week to be a help to somebody. Be a help to somebody. Be a help to somebody. Amen. Say, preacher, I don't know if I can. Yeah, you can. God can help you be a help. Now, I don't know if anybody got anything out of this or not, Mitch Pope, but I hope everybody got what you need. I hope your face been encouraged. But I'm telling you right now, if you now this is what amazed. Can I say this, and then we're gonna close. We'll get some fellowship. Right? 
This is one of the major, I sit back and consider sometimes, just like, right? Here. But people say they got away from God. And I just like it. Where in the world did you go that you got away from God? Where did you go? When the writer of old said, If I ascend in the heaven, thou art there. If he said, I, he said if I ascend in the hill, thou art there also. God is ever present. He does the same thing. Get a hold of it. You know what separates you from God? And that don't mean you're out of the presence of God. You know what separates you? See. Rider of old said, The arm of the Lord is not short to save, his ears not deaf to hear. But it's your iniquities that stand between you and your God. Uh, amen. I pray to God somebody got something out of this. You just want to come up here and sing it, or you want to sing it back there? Sing it loud, because you know I can't hear you. <laughs> Bless them, Lord. You praise them, Lord. For my youngest, amen. I appreciate my girls. Bless them. Jesus arose when they called him. And he said to them, Where is your faith? Because you prayed all night. Because you held on with all of your mind. Child, your cries have awoken the I'm glad he is my ever-present help. 
in a time of trouble. Let me tell you something. Uh, I love you this morning. My heart's just full. It just feels so good. Can't hardly stand it, amen. I hope everybody has got what you need this morning in the house of God. I pray you do. I pray your faith has been increased. And, and if God's done something for you, what makes you think He won't do something else for you, amen? I like that, Jerry. I appreciate you and I thank God for you. But let me tell you something this morning. I just want to rejoice, Tony Ellis, because my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Amen. 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 We can boast about all kinds of things. We can boast about everything in this life. But I'm telling you, the Bible says for us to rejoice in our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know that this morning. Amen. And I know He hears me. I know He's with me. We pray to God no matter what. He's on my side. I'm going to make it. Amen. We're going to make it. I'm going to hug you. We get us a song. If you need to pray, I pray everybody hearts is full and free this morning. If not, God loves you. Amen. God loves you. I thank God for that, Rick Rowe. God loves you. So you just pray for one another this week. So praise God that we're here. Come back, amen. Come back and be with us. And pray about revival. Amen. Help us. We need help. I, I'm amen. talking to you. You know, I could probably go through this world all by myself and make it to glory. I could get there through Jesus Christ. But wouldn't it be a lonely road? Amen. I like the fellowship with God's people. Amen. amen. I thank God for it. We're going to hug and get one and get your song. We'll fellowship and praise God.